welcome. This is NTA Tuesday Live. I'm Cyril Stover of the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, on April the 3rd, 2024, announced an increase in electricity tariff. Customers enjoying no less than 20 hours power supply daily will now pay 225 naira per kilowatt hour up from the current 68 Naira. Now, such customers are classified under Band A. The increase of more than 200% has drawn sharp comments ac from across board, with many Nigerians criticizing the move. Tonight, NTA Tuesday Live will examine the new price regime in the power supply chain. But before we go into the conversation, let's get to see this report put together by our energy correspondent, Joshua Ojito. Increase in price of gas to power, volatility in exchange rate, high cost of maintenance of power infrastructure, among other factors, are what distribution companies say prompted them to approach the regulator, an approval granted in line with the 2023 Electricity Act. From 68 Naira to 225 Naira per kilowatt is what customers in Ban A are expected to pay under the new tariff regime that came into effect on 3rd of April 2024. Customers under Ban A are less than 15% of the 12 million electricity customers currently in the country. Also, less than 500 feeders are serving the Ban A customers as against 875 feeders claimed by the distribution companies. For other customers, are they neglected? No. They will still continue to get service, but not up to 24, uh, 20 hours. And there are targets that have been provided for the distribution companies which the Commission will monitor and review from time to time to ensure the migration of other customers to better service. The Commission is leveraging on any technology to ensure that we get access directly to the distribution system and get the data as the data is being fed from the meters, the smart meters that have been installed on the feeders we are getting in real time or near real time. We don't give the discos the opportunity of any manipulation of data. While the new tariff is to enable investors to recover sufficient revenue, the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission insists that customers' rights must be protected. Discos have been uh, mandated to make certain investments and the Commission is monitoring it. But investment in the sector goes beyond the distribution level. It covers the transmission and also the generation uh, segments. But one thing is clear. Investments will only follow the path to recovery. And that has been the reason the level of investment we have witnessed in the sector so far is lower than what would be expected because of the challenge of recovery. But we are trying to ensure that we make the sector as much liquid as possible in order to attract more investment into the sector. And the Commission is poised and determined and we have able staff to ensure that we achieve that. Failure to supply 20 hours daily of electricity to Band A for one week. Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission says the affected customer will be downgraded to other bands. While customers in bands B to E will continue to enjoy in subsidy, the amount for subsidy this year is expected to drop with about 1.1 trillion naira. It is because of government sensitivity to the suffering, to the pace of our people that will not make us to migrate fully into a cost reflecting tariff or, in another language, to remove subsidy 100% in the power sector like it was done in the oil and gas sector. Government is so sensitive to the base of the people, to the service of the people, and we are not ready to aggravate the sufferings any longer, which is why we said it must be a journey rather than a destination. And the journey starts from now. That's we should do a gradual migration from the subsidy regime 
to a full cost reflective regime and we must start with some customers the concern of customers is for the regulator to beam its eagle eyes on the distribution companies to ensure compliance with the new tariff regime in order for customers to get value for money joshua ojito nta news that report sets the tone for tonight's discussion let's start off by introducing our guests we'd like to welcome to this program Dr. Musilu Husseini is Vice Chairman and Commissioner, Market Competition and Rates of uh, NEC, that's the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission. Thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you for having me. We're also joined by Dafri Akpaneye, who is NEC Commissioner, Legal Licensing and Compliance Division. Thanks for being here tonight. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Let me also welcome Body Fadipe, CEO, Sage Consultant and Communications. And, uh, his interest is in power, the power sector analysis, advocacy, and advisory. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. Good evening, viewers. Right. As you well know, at some point in time, the program will be interactive. It means you can join in the conversation. But at that time, we'll remind you of the process and the procedure. So let's go straight to the issues at stake. It's... Um, just about the most talked about matter today when it comes to uh, energy supply, the hype, some 230 or 31 or so percent increase and so many Nigerians will want to know why and how you got to that. Let's begin on that level. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Uh, good evening Nigerians and good evening Chief uh, Siri Stover. Um, Here's uh, a review of tariff for a segment of the Nigerian electricity supply industry customers, uh, moving from about 68 Naira to 225, which affects uh, about 15% of the customers. Um, the question you've raised is an important question, and I think a lot of uh, Nigerians have raised uh, similar questions. Um, we, first and foremost, electricity is like every other product that has inputs. Uh, for instance, in Nigeria power sector, the biggest raw material is gas. And uh, we also have uh, hydro. For instance, we have about 75% gas and 25% uh, uh, hydro plants. So what happens is, if there is any increase in the price of, hydro, uh, price of gas, definitely it has a direct impact on the cost of production, like every other product. And in that case, uh, also the operating expenses of the generators, that is, they have to import spare parts and so on and so forth, they have to pay salaries. The same thing is applicable to the transporters. Uh, the transporter in this case, TCN, Transmission Company of Nigeria, uh, as well as the operational expenses of the distribution companies, in also including their uh, cost of capital. And the HACT has mandated the Commission Section 116, 2A of the HACT, uh, mandates the Commission to ensure that any licenses is able to recover its efficient cost of operation, as well as uh, return on investment made in business activities. And there is wisdom in that because that's the only way you can incentivize investment. Putting all together, uh, the tariff we operated until last week was the tariff that was put in place as far back as 2022. And I think it's also important to point out that as at then, that 2022, that tariff was not reflecting the cost of operation. It was still being subsidized. Um, Fast forward, uh, in 2023, there was an application by the distribution companies for the review of their rates. We conducted the hearings in line and consultations in line with the provisions of the Act. And um, we issued a tariff order in, 20, in December 2023, of which at that time, based on the policy decision, the tariffs were frozen. But for the first time, we indicated what the cost reflective tariff was, was supposed to be at that time for each of the distribution companies. Um, 
If you look at December last year till March, there has also been a change in Forex, in foreign exchange, which happens to be one of the imputes because gas is indexed to dollars. So as a result of that, there has been a gap in the price payable by consumers about as that just before last week, the tariff paid by consumers was just about 30 uh, something percent of the, about 33 percent of the, of the cost of what the cost reflective tariff is supposed to be because about 67 percent subsidy was being paid. If you place that uh, side by side with the cost of production itself, um, it, that subsidy has at that time amounted to 90% of the cost of production. So in January, for instance, uh, the invoices from the generation companies was uh, 240 billion approximately, and the disco could only be compelled to, uh, to pay 10% because of the price they were allowed to charge us at that time. Because if you are supposed to charge for, it, it's very clear, it's, it, it's a clear thing. You buy the product, let's say uh, 60 Naira, you buy a, a good 60 Naira, you transport it by, let's say, 20 Naira, and your operational cost, everything is 100, uh, 20 Naira, making 100. And the government says, don't charge 100 Naira, charge 30 Naira. There is no magic that can be done that will lead to a situation whereby the business will break even. So the government will have to come in to subsidize, at least to pay for the remaining balance, of which it may not come as and when due. And uh, one thing we also need to bear in mind is that no investor will want to put serious investment in a sector that depends solely on government to that extent of 90% of production. So what the commission was, uh, did of course, it was a very difficult decision, but was a decision that is necessary to safeguard the industry. Because if you look at Janu February uh, in December, generation was much better than what we experienced in January. What was responsible for that was we got to a point where the generator could not pay for gas because they are not getting money from the, the value chain. And if they could not pay for gas, they could not maintain their facilities, is the recipe for chaos. Thank you. All right. Thank you so very much. Uh, just one quick thing before we go on. Um, some two years ago, you said there was wide consultations. How come this time around? Last year. No, this process started from last year. Okay. Around March last year, yes. the discos applied to the commission right. for a review of their application. Mm -hmm. By June last year, Immediately after we received the application, we put out a public notice in line with the provision of the law. And we put uh, adverts in the national dailies asking people to make comments on the okay. application by the distribution companies because right. we uploaded them okay. on our, so our website. What was the sum total of those uh, inputs by uh, the people? What, oh, what did okay. you read um, from them? We, uh, first and foremost, the online submission uh, that came into the dedicated email then, if I recall correctly, is in thousands. Mm -hmm. from, and we had our staff that went okay. through it one by one. Okay. Then we received a written application, a written submission from other stakeholders. Then around June, July last year, we conducted a public hearing. At that public hearing, we invited the Nigerian Society of Engineering, Engineers uh, we invited the NOHI, that is Nigerian Union of Electricity Employees, arm of the Nigeria Labor Congress. Uh, we invited uh, some consumer groups, some consumer advocates, yes. advocacy groups. Um, then we also personally invited some experts that we wanted them to come and interrogate the submission by the distribution companies. So we call them interveners, which is in line with our business right. role. Okay. Um, after that, we review their submission. So we take them into consideration. In fact, some of the submission by the Nigeria Society of Engineers led to this goal and even to TCN after that, going back to also make adjustments to some right. of the investment okay. they put forward. Okay. Uh, so
that's the process that led us to yeah. December and to this moment. Okay, thanks so much. I, what I was actually driving at was to find out if from uh, the various um, representations that you got from across board, if um, you would say that on a scale of uh, 1 to 10, uh, about 8 were for a sudden increase in the tariffs. Was that the case? Okay, the, um, I think the consensus then was that the Nigerians are not shying away from paying for uh, paying higher tariff, but there must be service. Exactly. That's so, exactly. And that was what we took into consideration okay, that so. led to this process. Okay, that, so. okay, people that are enjoying better service, let them pay why the government continue to okay. subsidize the other the 85 percent okay let's come to the oh, commissioner legal licensing and compliance division uh, you've just heard that and uh, uh, nigerians generally would not mind paying but insists on receiving value for what they're paying for given the scenario would it seem that that is what is obtainable at this time Okay, thanks for that um, uh, question. And um, just following from what um, the Vice Chairman said, um, we had had um, prior consultations on prior tariff reviews. Uh, in the past, the tariff reviews used to be blankets across all customer segmentation. And um, the um, feedback we got in the tariff reviews we conducted, I think it's 2021 or 2022. Mm -hmm. um, overwhelmingly, we went across the country and um, the feedback we see from customers is we are willing to pay for power if we see that power. And um, as a commission, we now came back and said, we need to revisit how we do these reviews. That um, it's, it's not, it didn't come across to the college consumers as being fair for um, the tariffs to be equalized and increased at the same time for people who had better service on the basis of investments that had been made and people who were yet to receive, um, get improved service on the basis of lack of investments. So we um, reviewed the um, networks as a whole and we, we saw um, a trend on the basis of investments made by, um, by the utilities and we introduced what's called the service-based tariff regime. And on the basis of that regime, um, the five tariff bands were created on the basis of four-hour four segmentations in service. So you, ha you have band A customers who get 20 to 24 hours of service, band B, 16 to 20, graduating all the way down to you get to four to zero for, for band, band E. And um, we introduced that. And um, we, we looked at that for a while and um, ran that through. So customers were now paying on the basis of the service they got. Um, but generally, there had been a, a tariff freeze um, since um, 2022 um, because, the, as the Vice Chairman rightly said, the Commission has a statutory responsibility to all the players in the sector, to the consumer, to the investor, and to government, to specify what the actual cost of operations are. And in determining what the actual costs are, it's efficient cost that is taken into consideration. So the utilities get rewarded on the basis of efficient operating cost, and the um, commission determines that on the basis of determining the macro economic parameters that would affect the operations of the utilities. So we, we did that for, um, we ran that for a while, but there was still significant um, government intervention in the form of subsidies. Um, but the subsidy levels were now getting unsustainable to the extent that um, it wasn't, the, the revenues from the market wasn't enough to sustain the market itself and on that basis um, you, Nigeria I would dare say has should have the largest power market in Africa 
on the basis of our demographics and the need for power. But when investors look at the numbers, there's no incentive to come in to build more power plants and invest in, in networks. So a lot of work has to be done. And um, upon the last review, we looked at it and um, we received the policy directive that, okay, uh, on the basis of what Nigerians um, clamored for, that we are willing to pay for power if we see it. Um, we agreed that um, there are 481 feeders in Nigeria today across the country where customers being supplied by those feeders get supply unfailingly for 20 to 24 hours a day barring any um, um, circumstances beyond the control of the utilities. So um, on, on that basis, and we also reviewed it as well and saw that those customers represent 15% of the uh, customer segmentation in, mm. in, in Nigeria. So on that basis, a decision was made to allow those customers across the country who are getting the what is an actual service of 20 to 24 hours of daily supply of electricity on demand to pay what it costs right. to provide that service. So that's why the decision was made. Just one aspect of that is um, we do know that quite a number of customers have raised questions about this classification. Um, and we have seen people who have come out to say they are ready to challenge the discos at any time. Which one of the discos can come out and say they actually supply 20 hours of electricity daily? And there are very few. So if you say we have about 12 million and just 15 percent, and of those 15 percent, a substantial uh, number of those are saying, no, we do not get 20 hours supply a day. How do you reconcile that? Okay, um, I, I think all of us um, watching this program and seated at this table are customers of, of discos. Um, personally, I'm a customer of two discos in Abuja where I reside and also one of the discos in, in Lagos. Um, I can tell you um, unfailingly that in Abuja, um, my supply, barring any bad weather or um, something wrong with the grid, the supply is almost constant. What if I said to you that I reside in Abuja and I cannot remember when I had 20 hours uninterrupted that, that's, supply? That, that's why um, something I learned when I came into government is um, your reality isn't your neighbor's reality. Right. So, <laughs> so, so, so on, 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 on that basis, right, yes, which is why we said in a 100% pool, 15% of the customer population across the country, depending on where they live, get 20 to 24 is hours there of supply. A, is there a, day. a way the regulator yes. can establish this beyond doubt? Yes, it, yes, yes, we can. Um, because on the basis of technology, right, we have access, we monitor the feeders on, on a daily basis. And before we made this call, um, there were way more feeders that were ought to be classified as band A feeders. But because we knew that we had to move to a framework whereby um, actual cost was going to be paid, um, we looked at over time the performance of the feeders. And 481 feeders, barring any issues with transmission or upstream issues with generation, provide that 20 to 24 right. hours of supply okay on a daily basis. So there was a confirmation of, of that. We, we, we'll return to that later on because yes, you've sir. just, you, you've put a caveat, a proviso, barring certain circumstances y yes. that the power yes. company, the distributor will tell you it's beyond them. So, and so, so, so but the, the customer keeps paying. No, no, okay, but, 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 but I think I can <laughs> just uh, okay. right. come in. Right. So um, as my colleague was saying, um, currently, the distribution companies have over 3,000 feeders, 11 mm -hmm. kV feeders. 
And uh, initially, prior to this review, over 1,000 feeders were classified, classified as Band A feeders. What the Commission did was to review the data we got, and we have different channels of validating the data, and I will speak to that shortly. So upon review, we brought the number of feeders that could be categorized as Band A feeders to 481 from, from 1,100 okay. feeders. Right. So, so of course, the discos have also been engaging with the commissions, mm -hmm. a few of the discos to get additional feeders, which they are trying mm -hmm. to prove mm -hmm. that could be classified as uh, Band A feeders. And to cite example, there is a, uh, an estate in Abuja here. In that estate is an, along the airport road. I won't mention the name of the yeah. estate. So in that estate currently, they belong to two different bands. The cluster one and I think cluster two, they are currently on band A because they are on the feeder feeding the airport. The, sec the other clusters are on the other feeder feeding some other part of uh, Lugbe and so on because so they are not getting so they don't get up to uh, up the 20 hours. hours. Okay. So it's happening, but uh, what I quickly want to say is that, of course, among the people you will see out there, some have genuine reasons and to complain, uh, to complain. But there are some. I, in my estate, let me tell you, I get good service, no 20 to 24 hours. <laughs> but you could believe that there are a few number of residents in that estate that are challenging that 24, uh, 20 to 24 hours availability. Mm. Mm. There was a time an admin had to put it there, I think maybe uh, towards the end of last week. Somebody asked, which band are we? The admin said, we are on band, in band A. Somebody said, are we getting 20 to 23, uh, 20 to 24 hours? He said, yes. The next question by somebody was, which country is that? And this is the estate that I belong to. I right, know so, that we are getting. So, so it's so possible. It's, <laughs> OK. <laughs> so the, the <laughs> we, we'll look at it in greater detail. But let's uh, come on to the CEO of Sage Consultant and Communications, uh, Buddy Fadipe. What do you make of all this, beginning from how the uh, increase in, uh, in, 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 in the tariffs and the reactions and, of course, the projections, the further projections? I, I think um, NEC is uh, passing through one of the most challenging periods mm -hmm. in its uh, existence. And what am I trying to say? In one, in one breath, we have a situation where customers are not completely disagreeing with the increase. Because if you, if you look at exactly, if, I mean, if you take a cross-section of opinion, what has come across most of the time is that where the electricity is available, we are willing to pay. But again, you have a situation where the economy is also passing through a trying period and people are wondering how they want to make the money or get the money to pay. But the question we really need to ask ourselves is this. Are we going to wait for the power sector to collapse before we start thinking of a revival? Or we should bite the bullet now and ensure that we have a power sector that we can move to the next level. I think the current data in the public space is that the subsidy for this year is projected to be 10% of the 2024 budget, which is about 2.9 trillion. And no business will be able to survive on the basis of that, if you say that that 2.9 trillion should be allowed to sit on the 2029 budget. So in order to at least mitigate what was an impending or imminent disaster, there was the need to reduce that 2.9 uh, subsidy that was already sitting on the budget, but which was not provided for. Again, one, if you, if, if, one of the problems that this sector has faced is that government in its magnanimity is willing to provide subsidy but government does not have the funds to provide the subsidy so there is always a delay and that delay has affected at over a period of time the ability to pay the gas suppliers and once you can't pay gas suppliers it means that the generating companies will not be able to offload what they have or release their capacity to the fullest 
And once that occurs, it affects the transporter, which is transmission, and automatically the last leg, which is distribution, is affected. So we, 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 we are faced with a situation where we need to take a decision and make sure that we have a power sector that we can always fall back on. Otherwise, then all of us, or most of us, will have to go on generating sets. All right. Um, in addition to the studio discussion, we also have a number of reports. Um, we will take some of them at this point. Let's start off with this report from Lagos. New electricity tariff for band A consumers from 68 Naira to 225 Naira per kilowatt has continued to generate various reactions. Some energy experts believe the step is long overdue as the present undervalue of energy sector is negatively affecting power generation, with the country currently producing 30% of its production capacity. It's not that people are not ready and not willing to pay for this power. It's the availability that we should concentrate on. And I think that's the area that the government needs to work on in such a way that they will provide uh, the electricity. Uh, uh, because the alternative are not cheap. Uh, uh, they are not cheaper either. So if you provide it, people are ready to pay. Then put in the me 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 monitoring mechanism in such a way that uh, uh, it can be done technologically and reduce the human interference so that you can recoup your fund. For Comrade Bala Zakar, a public affairs analyst, the technical remover of electricity subsidy now that the country's economy is facing challenges will affect many. The economy is prostrate. The economy of Nigeria is not in green today. Experts in energy sector are of the opinion that proper implementation and monitoring of both generating and distribution companies will give consumers value for their money. What punitive measure will, will you give to whoever that refused to deliver the 20 hours promise? Those are things that we need to now have. And that's what I'm saying. Let's all remove subsidy. We will not take them on their toe to say look you promised to deliver 20 hours i'm not getting 20 hours is there a way i will know through my meter that i'm not enjoying my 20 hours and i'll be able to get reimbursed or compensated for that lack of delivery or is somebody being punished for it that's why i'm saying let us remove subsidies so that we won't give excuse for failure see when there is no measure for you to measure what you are actually using there, there is element of distrust in it. And I think that is an area that the government needs to focus on. We are all thinking that the issue of privatization will create, uh, you know, will boost uh, the, the, the infrastructure development at the disco level. But we've not seen so much of it, rather. We've been seeing a lot of them having a collapse of some of these things. Players in the sector are calling for adequate provision of prepaid meters for electricity consumers, which they said will bring an end to wastage and theft of energy. From Lagos to Kano, this report is from Kano. I can afford to pay 10 to 15,000 Naira so long as there is constant electricity supply, which is cheaper than buying fuel. If we can have sufficient electricity, we will be willing to pay. What we don't like is insufficient supply. The views of consumers in Kano who prefer longer hours of electricity consumption than using fuel, especially at this festive season, that each of them is eager to settle his customers. However, they have to manage what they enjoy at the same rate. For those on band A, with the promise of a minimum of 20 hours, the tariff increase may not be their challenge. Their fear is the hours without electricity, which may coincide with production time. The increase in tariffs for certain class of consumers of electricity definitely will have its own ripple effect on everybody, on every citizen in the country, and will therefore invariably affect the cost of living of everybody. Because those high profile that will have to pay more will definitely load it over those persons who consume the goods they provide and services they provide. Allaying their fears, electricity distribution company in Kano is assuring the band A customers who are majorly industries 
a minimum of 20 hours in line with the dictates of the National Electricity Regulatory Commission. You can see where there are some feeders that will do 20, 20, 24 hours, some 22 hours, some 23 hours, but the minimum requirement is for us to achieve 20 hours. So as long as we can provide that, I believe most companies will be able to plan their production so that it can be within that period. And I to ensure customers get the best, the company has activated a rapid response team saddled with the responsibility of monitoring all the 40 feeders on Band A in the state. All right, back here in the studio, we have from uh, the response you got from those who were spoken to. It's not so much the question of the increase, but is there power available? And especially the question of this 20 hours uh, supply. It's a known fact that um, these parts, as soon as it rains, in fact it doesn't have to rain, <laughs> once there's a cloud, the power goes off. We're getting to the rainy season and here we are talking about 20 hours daily. Now what most Nigerians would like to find out is how do you class 20 hours daily for what period? Because it's known that as long as it's raining and there's been no improvement in that situation, the power goes off. And if I'm on band A and I'm paying for 20 hours and I'm not getting 20 hours, what happens to the disco? Okay, uh, thank you so much. I think it's an important question. Um, you will realize that the commission said minimum of 20 hours. Uh, we've taken into consideration some circumstances that may lead to the power not being available on the particular feeder at a particular any point in time. And that's why we give a room for four hours, to say minimum of 20 hours per day. And as you said, um, if you look at it, I had experience today. It rained in my area. I don't know whether it rained across Abuja. Immediately after the rain, the power came back. And um, area, somebody online, maybe back. you are not on by hey, feeder. Am. <laughs> okay. The, in fact, somebody that is always very critical of the commission actually went online to say, oh, surprisingly, it rained to the Susu area, and after the rain, immediately they brought back the power. So, and the commission has also put in place mechanism for monitoring. There is a strong monitoring and evaluation mechanism in place. Uh, the other way issued by, uh, issued by the commission uh, provides for if you are unable to supply uh, uh, 20 hours of electricity at least within seven consecutive days, that feeder will have to be downgraded. And if you are unable to meet the minimum of 20 hours per day on a period of one month, the feeder will not only be downgraded, but you have to refund the customer. Well, that, that, that's interesting. Just, yeah. just uh, before you go ahead with that, um, that's from the uh, point of view of the regulator. How will the customer know that that has been implemented? Okay. Um, good question. First, as I said, in terms of monitoring, we're leverage and technology. Uh, we, first and foremost, we have API application protocol interface. But we know that that may fail once in a while. That is, which send data into the commission uh, portal every hour. Uh, every, I think, 15, 30 minutes. Sorry. So, we have that, then we now believe that if that fails, if that fails, we also have the disco to grant access to their uh, meta that data management system that we can log in directly to get the data from there as they get it from the polls, from the uh, feeders, based on the smart meters they've put on the, uh, the feeders. So apart from that, we also now have, okay, let's also combine it with some sort of semi-manual process the Google Sheet that will be filled by the operator, and we combine all the three, then plus their publication on their website to ensure that what they are churning out is reflected the truth. And every day we have a meeting with them. Today at 4.15, we had a meeting on the performance. We went from one disco to the other. Yesterday at 2 p.m., we did the same thing. And we have noted, for instance, I think there is a disco that at least uh, two feeders have not been able to provide service yesterday and today, and we ask questions. And those feeders already are a candidate for downgrading. So once that happens, definitely 
they need to file to the commission if they downgrade any feeder, they will file to the commission and they will provide the evidence of the reform done to the customers. And the commission can also verify because we also have the database of the customers. We have the contact number, email address, and so on and so forth. We right. can uh, verify to see if truly they've done what they uh, claim to have, uh, to have done. So that's uh, a mechanism that is put okay. in In addition to that, sorry, um, yesterday we had a meeting with some selected consumer advocates mm -hmm. because we don't want to do this thing alone. The consumer advocates, their primary constituents, because constituents is our consumers. So, so what we told them is that we put this thing in place. We want you to work with us. You are how there. Let's mm -hmm. use you to also monitor the performance of the discourse. Okay. And they were very happy to work that, with the commission. That, that's we, exactly we where that I was going to already. with uh, the uh, commissioner compliance division. I was going to say, do consumers have a, any platform, any way of being part of this monitoring beyond what the regulator does? So that consumers can make an input and say, look, I mean, they are the ones who... Who are they? Who, who receive the services, and they can tell you exactly how long they have, they've, 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 they've had supply or not. So, is there any platform, any forum where the consumers can raise questions about the hours of supply? Um, yes, um, there are there are quite a few um, platforms, and um, even um, in the order itself, um, the order was um, specifically tailored to respect the customer as king and um, the mechanisms all mechanisms put in place in in the order are to shift away from the previous paradigm whereby the, you didn't know why you didn't have you don't have power so the first thing is in a 48 hour window if you haven't received supply, your disco has a responsibility to notify you that you do not have supply because it rained last night and a tree on Amadu Belo Way fell across a line and we are um, repairing that. So you know why the, there's an outage, right? And where that outage persists, like the vice chairman rightly said, for a period of seven days, or the disco is unable to meet up with its obligations to you as a customer, as a band A customer, that we have committed to in this compact, that you will pay the actual cost for getting the service, and you will get that service where the utility is unable to provide that service to you in a seven-day window, you get downgraded, not just to the next customer class, but to the band of service that has been provided in that, in that window, right? And you get compensated for, because as a band A customer, People who vended last week, when the, um, on Monday, mm -hmm. after the order mm -hmm. came into effect, they received lesser units. But True. band B to E customers, who vended, there was no change. So a band A customer who has vended and paid a band A rate and not received a band A service in that specified window gets downgraded to the actual service you've received, and you get a refund. And uh, in terms of, um, of a mechanism, so we've, the, um, the Vice Chairman rightly highlighted the various mechanisms in, in the order, and um, the Commission has mandated all utilities to have what's called the Customer Complaints Unit, whereby um, utility, the customers can go to the utilities directly and file a complaint. Where those complaints are not resolved mm. within the um, appropriate framework, there's a, redress, there's a redress mechanism. But on this particular issue, um, because the Commission sees this as a watershed moment, because the reforms 
one of the challenges of the reforms is we told investors to come in to invest in our power sector that they would bring in capital and we made assurances that as, as a government that we would address the political economy and give you the enabling environment to do your job, which is investing in power infrastructure and providing service. But we've not been able to achieve that because tariff reviews have been always contentious, mm -hmm. right? And um, every time we've done it, it's either it's been impeded by litigation, um, calls from uh, the National Assembly to reverse this. So it's, 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 it's a political discussion we still have on, on a daily basis. And because of that political discussion, um, like I already said, Nigeria is going to be the third most populous country in about 20 years' time in the world. And we are trading, the power we trade on a daily basis as a country is what Mumbai is trading as a city in India. Can things get better? Yes, they can. But they require investments. And who's going to make that investment? In 2013, when we took the decision to make that reforms, we'd agree that we needed private capital to support this investment. And investments would only follow certainty that if this investment is made, I can get a return. And the basis for getting that return is your pricing. And we see this everywhere, that even the, um, the minute, just take it when the petrol prices go up, the same day transport fare goes up, the market woman tells you oh, the price of Gary has gone up, mm -hmm. all, all products go up at, at, at the same time. So what happened with, we, the, with, the, with the increase in, uh, yeah, yes. in, in the cost of power? Yes, but no, so, so we, we need to take the steps that uh, is required to bring in the capital All so right. that investments can be made to improve this scenario. And once you've had maturity in the investments, the prices start to come down. I think I can but quickly jump in on that, uh, okay. uh, the good. assertion that the price of all the products will, will go up. I think it's a question of the consumers that will be affected by these, let's say the C&A customer, the mm -hmm. com uh, commercial and industrial, mm -hmm. why are they using backup generation? If the, a business dependent on this generation is multiple in terms of the cost compared to 225, because if you uh, use a diesel to, f uh, to fill your generator for your production, Definitely, you buy this at the rate of maybe one three or one four, less even conservatively one thousand two hundred. So that the one liter of this you can only give you a maximum of three unit, three kilowatt hour. That means that is four hundred naira fair cost per kilowatt hour. You've not had the cost of the uh, the generator. You've not had the cost of uh, maintenance. So if you are now guaranteed twenty hours of supply at two to five, definitely you are better off and. That's why the most important thing is the availability of All supply. Right. Barring, the commission is called, uh, okay. Barring any disruptions, which uh, the discos can say is beyond them. But um, at this point, let me just say we've been joined in this conversation uh, by Dr. Sam Ahmadi. Dr. Sam Ahmadi is a former chairman of the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NEC. Uh, Dr. Ahmadi, it's good to have you join us here. Thank you. Well, uh, the conversation has been on before you came in, but um, you're not new to this. And of course, uh, there was uh, a, a cap on review of prices during your tenure. You think that it's okay at this point in time to put in a 200 or 200 plus percent increase in tariffs? And what do you see when you look at how uh, the industry has uh, developed over the, since privatization? Well, thank you. I, I think um, the, the say he who wears the shoe you know, feels it better. I guess uh, people who are there right now have better understanding and familiarity with the issues. But there are core basic or basic principles that people can always use to say, okay, what happens? 
the first question is that look, tariffs can be reviewed. Of course, usually go up. I mean, rarely do they go down because some of the factors that make them go down probably are not very common, and you could probably need to get to some level of industrial maturity before things start going down. So most of most times it goes up. Um, they, they did, it can be reviewed depending on several factors. So one of those factors would be how the market is performing. And the, the argument that the minister and others have made, including NEC, is that there's so much subsidy the government is paying. I mean, the minister gave us figure that is very, very, for, from a fiscal perspective from government, that looks huge. The other factor is that the utilities themselves are complaining all the time. I, I take a view that three points for me is that what NEC does historically is incentive regulation, which means the idea is that those whether it's tidy for whatever they're doing, the notion is to make the utilities do better. So if they perform better, it's better for the customer. It's also better for them because they make they, they'll be more profitable and viable long term. So the tariffs do not exist in isolation. It's not just okay, tariff, we give them tariff or we don't give them tariff. It's basically one of the instruments to unlock better performance. Mm -hmm. What I think I would observe, three things I think probably need to be done better. One is consultation with the customer groups. At the point, we did about two, three tariffs. At the point, we now had the regulation on tariff, which they use. We should recognize that that could be extraordinary, minor, major reviews. But, but each of them would require the disco to engage the customers themselves. What the principles of tariff from since 96 something by Professor Bombright is simple. One, tariff must be simple. Two, acceptability. Three, operationability. That means you understand the tariff, you accept. Oftentimes, because when I was there too, we had a pressure. The market should work, you know? So we are going to privatize. Some of the tariffs we approved, I didn't think probably we had factored a lot of the customer concern. But we needed to make sure investment happened. So I sympathize with regulators who are faced with a market that needs investment. And so they would like to sometimes shift a little bit to the operators and less the customers. So that's one thing you should note. In this particular instance, the questions I would like to clear also is, we talk about this subsidy. And if you look at next um, letters, market performance advice to the utilities. Some of them are supposed to be doing 10%, 15%, 18% of their uh, bills. So what it means that the NEC expects that they will pay back only 18%. If you give them 100% power, they sell. They're going to return only 18 for example. Uh, I think it, uh, Ikeja has about 14 or 15 for emotion. So that's just like that, out of 100%. So that constitutes part of that subsidy. So I would like, if I was a National Assembly, if I was a, regular, a legislator, I would ask the regulator to show us what component of this subsidy uh, is subsidy that is addressed to tariffs in the sense that if the real cost of serving NTA is 7 Naira, but for whatever reason, we don't want NTA to pay 700. They can afford it. They are important strategically. So three, NTA pay three naira. So the four naira that government is subsidizing or cross subsidy, meaning other people are subsidizing, is a subsidy clear. Subsidy because you ought to have paid this, but you are not paying this. But where you sell power to Abida Disco here, maybe because ministry is owing them. Maybe because the military is owing the billions and not going to pay, for whatever reason, we say, settle the market only 10%. Mm -hmm. That is not traditional subsidy. It means it's more like debt. Government is going to carry that debt, and government, through the bulk trade or whatever mechanism, will need to be responsible. So the question people say is, why this subsidy we talk about, how, many, how much of it is really based on deferred tariff? This is, a, this is the tariff. And I know I agree with the tariff is very low compared with the cost of production. I mean, it's very obvious. So that's one issue. That means this tariff needs to be unpacked and examined. So National Assembly will ask NEC to bring, you know, show them 
which of these subsidy mm. is actually in the features of the, 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 the utilities, or which of them also that they can pay for it. The second issue I think is important here is the classification of the band A. Just experience. I was not on band A in my, in my Garadmawa, you know, estate. Suddenly, that day, we were put on band A. They have brought us back to band B. So, I guess ANEC has also threatened and find, I think that was around about 200 million. So, you're going to see very manipulative practices, right. which is what utilities will do, to lock people into band A without necessarily being band A. That's all. The other issue is, even these band A people, a few of them, how did you come to the, they know better, how did you come to the, know they can deliver 20 hours of power to these people, have they delivered 18 or 16 regularly for let's say six months? Next look at it and say, okay, these people with this they can do. This. Are there new power? Is, is there an improvement in quantity of power that shows that these groups can do this and still keep delivering power to those in band B and C? You know, in the status quo. So these are the kind of things I want to see. So it seems to me that everybody is under, and I pity it is the wrong time to be here because everybody is under pressure. To, to fix this fiscal crisis. You know, you can't be sitting there and seeing trillions as debt or subsidy. You would want to get the money somehow. So I think, this is my thinking, that the procedures for this probably sh could have been better in terms of getting each disco to talk to these band, band A people and assure them and provide a confidence. But the essence of tariff making is that the distribution company should own it. It's not NEC. NEC approves. And they should be able to extract consent with the customer. And the customer says, so I ask myself, what changed to guarantee me more power? Exactly. That's well, really some of the issues that okay, NEC so probably will explain to customers. And so these are the questions that most people are asking. But let me go back to uh, Barifadi Pei at this point and put to you, would you really blame the Nigerian customer? If he raises so many questions after this uh, hike in tariffs, after all, many Nigerians are aware that since the privatization of the power sector, hundreds of millions have gone into improving the system. And there hasn't been a commensurate uh, improvement. So if there is a hike now, would you really blame the citizen who says, look, f for so many years, all this amount has been thrown into power and nothing has improved and now we hear there's one subsidy that's been taking off. In fact, some people have even questioned the whole idea of a subsidy and say, where is it? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, you really cannot blame the citizens for being skeptical if, if the citizens come out today to say, look, in the past this had been our experience. As a matter of fact, it is because of a near state of loss of confidence that more people now have what you call I better pass my neighbor <laughs> and then uh, different categories of generators and things I mean uh, alternative sources of power supply that they privately provide for but to hold on to one side I mean that side of the argument alone is to be unfair to the market itself I, I think one fundamental issue that has plagued this se sector till date and which this subsidy is supposed to address is the issue of liquidity. Right from the word go, it had been a problem and that problem continued to persist till date. Uh, uh, even before this current increase, tariff was frozen for about 15 months, yet NEC has the power to review the tariff every six months based on macroeconomic indicators. But we must also understand that it is still within this same economy that customers are, I mean, are operating in, that the sector is also operating in. I mean, let's, let's, look at, let's look at some factors. Let me borrow from my knowledge of law. In law, there is what we call res ipsa loquitur. What does that mean? It means that the fact speaks for itself. So what are the facts? Number one, what is the cost of inflation today? What was the cost of inflation yesterday? As a matter of fact, Nigeria's inflation is about the highest globally. 
where America is reducing its own, Nigeria's inflation is on the rise. That's number one. Number two, what is the cost of Forex today? What was the cost of Forex some few years, I mean, so, not even years, some few months ago? As a matter of fact, as at May last year, we were still hovering around 700 or 600 naira to the dollar. Today, whether officially or from the black market, dollar is above 1,000 naira. Not to talk of the pound or any other currency. So, what are we trying to say here? If the market is liquid enough, I'm sure the level of investment would have been a lot better. And what we are saying today will not be the same story that we'll be telling again. So, as much as we do agree that customers or end users reserve the right to be skeptical, and we must admit here that the market is not as efficient as it ought to be. I mean, can you imagine a country of over, let's even say averagely 150 million, struggling with less than 5,000 megawatts in the grid at any point in time? That's disturbing enough. But this is a market that also requires two things. One, patient capital, and then very huge capital. And the capital is not coming from anywhere else other than from internally. So if the capital is not there to invest, bring in the, uh, maybe at the disco level, the LT reticulation, then the 11 kV lines, the 33 kV lines, the distribution transformers, and the injection substations, they are working vehicles and every other thing. And then maybe at transmission level, the towers and all of those things, and then the generating level. But guess what again, and this is very, very important for us to mention. Even when there has been investment, it is the same Nigerians that go and vandalize these lines. And I think that's a major issue. In one breath, we are looking for a functional power sector that can unlock productive process and bring about a, a more stable life for Nigerians. In another breath, the same Nigerians, because nobody has told me whether it is Nigerians or Syrianians or Americans that are coming to destroy our, I mean, that coming to vandalize. Transmission has been crying about one thing, that they are vandalizing their towers almost on a daily basis. Of course, if you go to the distribution level, it's, it's, it's perhaps even much more terrible. Yet, Nigerians want a power sector that is functional. I remember that during the Diagon days, the miscellaneous offenses decree made that offense a 21-year jail term. In spite of that, we still have, in 2024, almost about 40 years, people still going to Vanda. So what, what, what do Nigerians really want? Well, anyhow, um, there are those who would argue with you that you're talking about a minute segment of Nigerians, and you probably would be overgeneralizing if you said Nigerians did that. Well, but of course, my apologies it's in for the that same generalizations, way. Right. but Thank you. they are Nigerians <laughs> well, all the same. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, well, at, at, at this point, we'll take a short break. When we return, the conversation will continue. We'll go back and see what the discos themselves are doing. In fact, there are those who question the entire privatization process where people who had no competencies or little competencies in the sector, but, you know, the energy companies and turned around and took a lot of money and did not do what they were supposed to do. So there are so many angles to this. Stay with us on NTA Tuesday Live. We'll be back shortly. Yeah, All right. Exactly. Thanks for staying with us. And uh, expectedly, the conversation uh, went on even as uh, we took that break here. But uh, thanks for coming back here. This segment, of course, is when the phone lines will be open. That means you can join in the conversation in the studio. And we say this every time. Uh, if you're calling in tonight, the numbers will be on your screen. If you're calling in tonight, we say this all the time, do us a favor, turn down the volume of your TV set, and uh, that's the way to avoid the hurlback and the echo. And we encourage you to go straight to the point, and we ask you not to bother too much about the greetings. A simple hello is just fine. Uh, so the numbers will be on your screens. You can take advantage of those and call in and be part of this discussion with either a question or comment. We'll start off with another of our reports. This one is from Port Harcourt. If any amount of money, if you give him services. Because if I want to produce now, my customer needs my, my, my water or need my blood. Will I say this? No, once I check it that I will produce, I will get even 1,000 Naira out of the uh, supply. 
I will say, okay, let me produce. The Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NEC, recently announced a 230% increase in the electricity tariff for Band A consumers, raising the rate from 68 Naira per kilowatt per hour to 225 Naira per kilowatt. This hike affects about 1,974,385 electricity consumers. The tariff adjustment ostensibly aims to significantly reduce the estimated 2.9 trillion electricity subsidy in the 2024 fiscal year. In River State, consumers within Emonha, Rumola, other Georgia and surrounding areas who are hit by the impact of the tariff hike are concerned about the economic implications for businesses and consumers. They say the government's decision to increase electricity tariff by approximately 230% could strain household and business budgets at those axes. The time is wrong. We actually need the light. There's no light and we need the prepare meters. People cannot pay on estimated bill for the 7,000 naira on at the end of the month, which is as strange as I think it's, it's really telling on the people. We really didn't want the government to, to rescind its decision for now and think of how to uh, ameliorate the people from their suffering. The band A and band uh, what, B people, they are completely two different set of people. If you check their income, some people earn. For instance, in, in, in the civil servants, they earn just about 30,000 naira. And if you give them bills that uh, they begin to pay 20,000 or 15,000, how, how would they feed their families? So to me, the power may be available, but if it's available and people, nobody is using it, it does not make any economic sense. Given more insights into the impact of the policy, energy expert Mr. Moses Achu and an industrialist Dr. Mike Elichi regret that consumers will pay more for the same amount of electricity usage for the boarding households. Reviewing this based on the economic side of this, on the citizenry, now you know you have different customers who are also on that same band A system. That means different capacity to pay. Now, the fact that they are the people who are enjoying 18 hours of light and above, that means they are the prime customers, the prioritized areas, as it were, those who are seeing the light, talking about look, looking at it in the layman's point of view. But the fact that they are seeing the light does not mean that they may have the full capacity to pay for the supply. So, just like you look at other kind of goods and services out there there are people the services are there at this rate but is there everybody that can afford that rate so the generality of what i've seen about those in this band a system is that not many of them can pay for it at this rate though the light is available at this rate yes i agree increase should be done with the services so you are providing. You understand? They should also put their, if, when they are increasing, if you are providing services, it is proportionality of the services you are providing. You can say, let there be increase. Yes. You, you get what I mean? People will also manage it because Nigerians are not fond of switching off their light when they are going away. That's why we need to have pay as you go meters. What happens in London and other places like country? People know that if you leave it, your digit will finish, so you must switch off everything. But that is when power is provided. Stakeholders note that higher production costs may be passed on to consumers through increased prices for goods and services, affecting consumer purchasing power and potentially contributing to inflationary pressures in the economy. Right, that report from Port Harcourt, an next report comes from Abeokuta. Ogun State is one of the states in Nigeria where some customers enjoy consistent power supply. In Abeokuta, the state capital, areas such as Olokuta, Obadaoku, Lukosi, Ojiri, among others, enjoy stable electricity when compared to other areas within the metropolis. These areas investigation revealed are in the band A category expected to enjoy 
20 to 24 hours of electricity supply on daily basis but customers living in the area explain that electricity supply in their area is a bit stable more than other areas in Abeokuta. They however argue that they do not enjoy up to 24 hours of electricity on daily basis. I don't think it makes any sense and I'm saying this because uh, if you look at it generally are we getting what we should be getting in terms of electricity supply? We are not giving us the right value for our money. One thing that we need to come are going to be sincere with us. Once we know the, what they are doing and this, we see that they are having impact, why not? We are ready to face the, the, the challenge all through, believing that I will be light at the end of the time. The electricity around this area is quite okay, even though there are times that maybe when it wants to rain, you know, definitely have to switch it off because of uh, the poles and all that. But the electricity is okay. It's still fair enough. It may not be 24 hours, probably it could be 15, some it could be 12, it depends, but it's still okay. The customers were reacting to the increase in the tariff announced by the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission notes that they will not mind the increase if they are really enjoying the services. They advise the electricity distribution company covering the area to step up their game with a view to making Nigerians enjoy their services without making them pay for unrendered services. The impact will be much, that's the truth. The impact will be much. Because I believe the previous the initial unit would be about probably about maybe 70 or something. I, I, I don't really know the amount of the, the kilowatts. But now it should be probably about 200 or above. You know, that means we're buying a light of a 200 naira. I'm sorry, 2,000 naira. Definitely, it's no amount it to be. So that means the, that which the rates will be uh, probably enjoying. Even when there is light, you may not be able to access or enjoy it because of the, the cost. And at the same time, too, it will also have impact in the output as we get people being able to, able to produce it. Definitely, as I, what I'm producing, I have to increase my uh, uh, price too, to ensure that we're able to cope with the situation of the, of the, of the price in the economy. Well, the, that increment, you know, most of us around this area are civil servants, just as I've said earlier. And uh, all of us are still crying for increment in our pay and all that. So if you increase the tariff, some of us, we have to be offering our most things and it may not really go down well with most of us. At this level, we are still talking about uh, uh, inadequacy in uh, electricity. No, no, no. It's something I grew up to know electricity has been perfect in this country. That was in the 60s, early 70s. And let me say a little bit of early 80s. Now we are talking about electricity supply. We should have moved ahead of all these things. Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission approved an increase in electricity tariff for ban A customers from 66 naira per kilowatt hour to 225 naira per kilowatt hour in Abelkuta, Yemita Lemo, NTA News. All right, we're back in the studio now. The conversation continues. Hopefully, the calls will come through. But well, let's uh, return to uh, the vice chairman and commissioner of market competition and rates of NERC. It's already in the works that um, what you're looking at is maybe in three years and uh, migration of all the other bands to band A. That's hoping that uh, this one we've embarked on would justify uh, the, all the reasons. But again, a lot of Nigerians would ask that this to a large extent is dependent on what the discos do and as the regulator can nigerians trust that the regulator would stand firm and carry out its functions okay uh thank you so much i think it's a very good question and uh, we say yes um and i think uh I've repeatedly said in many forums for that uh, previously the enforcement action or power of the commission was a minima in the previous act but now the powers have been greatly improved and we have started testing it we are not going to abuse it but we continue to enforce um, as was reported earlier on we put in place some provision in the order the tariff order that the discos we need to abide by and failure to me that there are consequences. 
And um, for instance, Abuja, when we noticed that oh, they uh, messed up their platform uh, in an attempt to change the tariff for Ban A, and it affected a lot of other customers that are not supposed to be affected, the commission shall start, I think the meeting happened around 10 p.m. And the following morning, we take a resolution, we took a resolution and the following morning announcement was made with respect to the enforcement that the commission meted out to them. Mm -hmm. uh, we still have the powers and we continue to ensure okay. that these schools, not only the discos, it, it cuts across all the lines. Right. The challenge is that, uh, the challenge is because disco, discos are the interviews. That's yeah. why people, yeah. people. Uh, complain <laughs> a lot about the disco. We have the transmission companies that those action can even be more detrimental mm -hmm. than a uh, disco's action because if 132 KV line goes off, for instance, it covers a lot, a large expanse of uh, areas, a large areas, compared to if a uh, transformer, distribution transformer goes off. Okay. So I, I, I can say that clearly. Right. And uh, if you permit me, there was a question you asked uh, oh. Mr. Bode for the on oh, the okay. Yes, I, I, I know, okay. but we'll, we'll come to that. Just um, uh, hold on a second. We have our first caller on the line, Afolabe, who's calling in from Quara. Hello. Hello. Would you turn down the volume of your TV, Afolabi? Good evening, sir. Right. Good evening. Go ahead. Yeah. I've done that already, sir. Go on. Yeah. I have three messages for the next. One, there is no enough metering. One, no enough metering of the consumer. Now, we are, we are putting people on band here. We are asking for this customer, they don't have meter. that. So, that means whether it's up to 20 hours or not, even if they have their life at home, they think they're 30,000 and 30,000 at the end of the month. So, NEC has not done well in the area of metering. I must say this categorically. Except that we look at FBC. In Kuala here, some places are put on band here. You don't have meter in some areas. Now, some places in Nigeria, like you have that you have just shown now, most of the companies don't have meter. We can't get enough between while you put places and people on uh, band day. So if they are going out in the morning, they hope they are putting up everything, they still come back, you just get the user that they use it like you still pay for band day. So next month, I just be sure of metering. They've not done this that very well. All these discos, they, they prefer giving people uh, with their feet, without meter. So you have to address the issue of metering. That's one. Then secondly, if you look at the investments of federal government in the area of regeneration, you are generating power with gas. Unlike when you are generating power with hydro. Automatically, the moment you are using power with the gas, you pay the, the lot of cost. That's why they put to subsidize. Look at some area in Nigeria, from North Central, Kuala Hopkins now. Why not investing on renewable energy like solar? I'm aware China has 8,000 megawatts of solar energy generation. We have some other, even in Europe, some of them have 5,000 generation. But all these so far so good. We have not yet up to 10,000 megawatts as you are using gas, this time, this time, this time, this time. At times, there is a cutting of a uh, gas pipeline, there is no light. So, the government should direct their investment in the of generation. I wouldn't know why from North and North is not way. Why are we not having generation of power through solar? Nasani, a federal government agent, they are now producing solar modules. What is the capacity? How much the federal government comes in that area? Then secondly, Nigeria generate and use. We don't have power generation storage in Nigeria. Cost me. So now, in the system we have a generate and use, we may put the problem of generate and you can't store it. So that's the second problem with the Nigeria generation. Now, coming back to this code, this is discourse. They are the ability to Nigeria, they are not active. I live in Turkey in Lori Quality. Let me tell you this. When there is a problem in our transformer, we contributed money to that and that after, after a while, the, the transformer, what do you gain from it? And they will tell you, if you do the uh, transformer, balance your money, don't say you donate to save you, uh, save, 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 save
change you, you provide for the, for the disco. So, how many disco have been penalized in Nigeria for not making transformer work very well? All right. The neck are just like the dust, they can only back their no fight. How many disco have been started in Nigeria to pay penalty to the consumer? Until when that is been addressed, we cannot achieve a lot in power sector. Right. Thank, Thank you very, you very much. much my concentration and my permission. Thank you right. very much. Thank you, Afolabi. Right. Thanks. Okay. Well, we had the issues. Okay. Uh, either of you gentlemen can take over that. Oh, 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 okay. Thank you so much. And thank you, Mr. Afolabi from Kora State. Um, I will start from the second question and I will move to the third and the uh, first one. Uh, You've mentioned investment in renewable energy, but one thing we need to understand is that renewable energy is not cheap. And that speaks to the heart of the discussion we've been having with respect to pathway to recovering investments. Um, I think it was probably during Dr. Amadi or shortly after he left, there were 14 solar projects that the government I uh, was negotiating with some private investors. Up to today, it hasn't seen the light of the day because of the commerciality. There are so many conditions they put in place, uh, a guarantee, a partial risk guarantee, and so on and so forth. It, it's just about the commerciality of the business, of the sector itself. If we are not able to resolve that fundamental, we'll be talking about solar, we'll be talking about is going just going to be grammar. Uh, for instance, mini grid. People are getting mini, are enjoying mini grid in some rural areas and so on. If you measure the mini grid per kilowatt hour today, it's probably going around 300 naira per kilowatt hour and so on and so forth. But the most important thing, fundamental thing we need to address is let people get, and that's why we started with this fragment or section uh, segment of the consumers that these schools as of today and not limited to the disco. We need to be honest with us, ourselves. It goes back to the transmission, goes back, uh, goes to the generation. There is no way they can all supply 24-7 power to all the connected population today. That's why we now say, okay, let's start. And I think the model worked for telecom to some extent when they started. Of course, there is difference between the two mm -hmm. sectors. But we can leverage on what has happened. They started telecom from Lagos, Abuja, and so on and so forth. Then because of pathway to recovery, banks were running after them, and they were able to extend access. So uh, in short, renewable energy is not cheap, and the commerciality we have to work before it can happen. Um, on the issue of uh, contribution for transformers, poles, and so on and so forth, uh, this particular issue was one of the core focus at our meeting yesterday with the consumer advocacy groups uh, because we know that it's happening but unfortunately there is a regulation in place that provides for such but it's not being followed sometimes because the customers are not aware because uh, I think the regulation was signed by Dr. Amodi in 2015 just before he left the commission uh, which is the regulation on investment in networks. It allows third party to make investment in distribution or even transmission uh, network. And there should be an agreement that determines the recovery. So, but unfortunately, maybe for one reason or the other, the regulations are not being followed. So it becomes very difficult if the, because NEC is supposed to approve. So what we've now said is that working with the consumer advocates, mm -hmm. we want them to serve as the mouthpiece of the commission okay. to ensure that customers are not being ripped off. So that if the customers ask any reason to even contribute at all, they will definitely ensure that it's brought to the knowledge of the commission and for mm -hmm. approval so that they can recover their, their money. So that mm -hmm. is that on that uh, particular uh, question. Okay. And, okay. Well, 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 we have another caller, Olabode, who is uh, calling in from Lagos. Olabode, let's go ahead. We still have the matter of metering, but let's hear Olabode this part. Hello. Yes, hello. Yes, go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. We are talking about crossing this line, but I want to start from the uh, banking issue. The banking has a root. It has a root. 
that someone to talk to my Buddha. That bandy passed through a confusing location. Some of them are well connected to be able to be. Some of them just find themselves in the bandy. Now, the people that want to be in the land that pass through bandy and every 10,000 in the month, and we subject them to do 25 party no one. And we said because that uh, it can be hard me to pay. How does it survive? That's number one. Number two is that we are running a system that is not data driven, not on a people level. The map from NEC, can you tell us the research that goes into arriving at people that are supposed to be in that day? Then, how much is it in their life? All right. Thank you. So two additional issues have come in now, and uh, say so some consumers just find themselves in uh, a place that is classified as band A, and they may not necessarily <laughs> be um, the high-end uh, consumers of electricity, but they're still going to be paying a higher rate. How do you determine that? And uh, of course, he's also talked about uh, a database for some of the uh, decisions that have been taken. Right. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm sure Commissioner yes. Commissioner Davi will yes. also Commissioner speak Davi. to yes, those, part of it. Yes. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, the first thing um, I think we left out the question on metering. Yes, the metering which, question, which is which is equally applicable to. Yes. Um, to both questions, um, the question from Afalabi and mm -hmm. Alabadi's question as well. Um, we we do actually do a lot of data analytics, and um, before reaching our decision, um, we review the um, customer segmentation. Yes, we agree there's a metering gap. Um, for a lot of the customers are not um, are not metered, and a lot of work is being done towards closing the metering gap. But before this order was issued, we had reviewed the number of unmetered band A customers. And in the band A customer segmentation, about 70% of the customers in that particular group are metered. And the commission has um, is issued orders and directives to the, to the discos that we are to prioritize the metering of band A customers. So there's, there's work being done now to ensure that the metering gap in band A is closed out. Because you can't be um, asked to pay uh, a burden of such a co high cost reflective tariff on an estimated bill. That is totally being unjustifiable to, to the customer. So the, the um, work has been done in that regard. And we've seen that of that entire customer demographics, only about 30% of them remain unmetered. And urgency is being given towards closing the metering, prioritizing mm -hmm. the metering of customers in that particular group. Then um, um, reference was also made to the basis for uh, determining who it's falls right. into band A. So uh, it, it's, it's not a discriminatory practice. It's done along the lines of where has investment been done to guarantee a certain level of supply, regardless of your um, standing your station in, in, in life, right? Uh, everyone wants supply, and everyone wants supply on demand. So it's, uh, in, in the power sector, we're, we're dealing with two, two bifurcated serious issues. You have the first issue, which is the issue of afford, af availability, right? Then the next issue is the issue of affordability, right? But before you can have an affordability discussion, you must first of all address the issue of av av availability, okay. right? So the networks were looked at, right? And feeders, uh, which, we said, which we said in the opening, feeders that could guarantee, the 491 feeders that can guarantee that band A service is what was placed on band A, right? Okay. And um, the, so the customers need to be metered. And you having assurance of having 20 to 24 hours of supply a day a lot of demand side management is now required on the on the customer side. Okay. Well, I'm I'm told Olabode is back on the line. I I yes. Hello. I thought I thought he had uh, made his point. Uh, right. Hello. 
हेलो यस गुड इवनिंग Some others are trying to get in through to uh, pose their own questions. So you just uh, the last bit of it, uh, you're saying that um, starting off with band A, you see that as discriminatory, and uh, um, band B and the other bands may suffer little or no attention. Uh, but again, uh, let's turn to the NERC officials who can uh, explain that. Because some have said, look, is it that simple? If you now get the discos to up their supply to the band A customers, um, how will that affect supply to band B, C, and the rest of them? Okay, um, thank you so much. I think first and foremost on the issue of metering, which my colleague uh, addressed the other time, um, as a stopgap, instead of allowing disco to just arbitrarily build customers, we have what we call cap, capping order that try to cap the maximum the disco can build a particular, which is based on empirical data. We call it pay as your neighbor. Of course, it may not be 100% accurate, but it's much better than just arbitrary uh, billing. And any disco that is found to have violated it is due for punishment. We did, uh, a few weeks ago, we um, uh, put out a notice of enforcement for violation of capping order by some discos. And uh, uh, Cardinal, for instance, has complied. They've refunded, uh, started refunding their customers, are uh, doing credit adjustments. So, other discos have filed a petition for reconsideration by the Commission in line with the business rules of the Commission that provides for a window within which any licensee can file an objection for reconsideration mm -hmm. of a decision by the Commission. Uh, uh, that, 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 that's that. Um, I think the question about band B and other bands being neglected is a valid question, right? But the commission, I think we said initially that band A is to start. They have a target to migrate, and there is another that deals with the target periodic, which is going to be reviewed periodically. The other thing is that for customers that are in other band, the expectation is with this review of tariff, there will be more money coming into the industry for payments to the generation company. I mentioned when we started that for January, this group will only be compelled to pay 10%. With this review now, they will be compelled to pay 50% because the subsidy now has been removed to some extent. Mm -hmm. So now with that money, additional money coming from the markets, is believed that that will give some level of comfort to generation companies to be able to pay, they will be able to pay for gas, and that will dovetail into improvement, at right. least marginal increase in the availability of power. Okay. Our next call is from Bielsa Clifford, calling in from Bielsa. Hello. Hello. Yes, go ahead, Clifford. Uh, uh, good morning, sir. Uh, I'm Clifford Jensen calling from uh, Bayelsa. My opinion is that the recent increase in uh, electricity is that uh, 
when uh, government, even the National Assembly, I think the past National Assembly requested that these Nigerian uh, electricity generation funds from this should provide meters for customers so that uh, it will not be an estimated building system. Since that time to now, they never comply with those uh, requirements so that uh, they will not sustain Nigeria with what they are doing. But just immediately they said to increase tariff, overnight the tariff has been increased and they have started charging people to pay the new tariff. But what that will make the customer, we the consumers, to benefit from the system so that we will not feel that we are doing some change, they refuse to do it. Since then till now, no meters for almost 75% of Nigeria. But the moment they said to increase the risk to overnight, everybody has feel the impact of the incident. So for me, let them do the necessary things on ground. If not, I can tell you that Nigeria will always be suffering from these people because they will increase it. We don't have meters at the end of every month. They will bring bills. Bills that we don't even know how they expect it to arrive at. And we must say, if not, so they will disconnect us. So let them first handle the important thing, which is meter. How do you solve product without having a measurement instrument for the people? What measurement do you use to sell it out to the people? Estimated measurement. That is not the right thing. So I'm pleading with the relevant authorities. Let them first provide meter for Nigerians, for God's sake. Let us have the meter so that from the meter, that is the measurement instrument whereby they can use to measure what we consume. If I can consume one naira electricity, I set my appliances in the house to consume that amount. So if the thing is too expensive, I will cut, cut down my cost so that I consume little by little. If I have to this freezer, I run one, maybe for two hours, I put it up so that I'll be able to regulate myself. I want them to please provide with us for Nigeria so that uh, it will going to help us to regulate how much electricity we can consume based on our income. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Clifford from Bielsa. Thank you. Just keep the calls coming through. And, uh, okay. Yes. And, uh, well, he is also uh, on the matter of metering and wondering why companies that uh, have failed to comply with the directive to make sure that their customers are metered. Uh, so much in a hurry now to jack up the price. Now that's a question of uh, price increase. They can do that overnight, but <laughs> they, wouldn't, they wouldn't be in any hurry to provide the meters. Uh, again, it speaks to uh, what many Nigerians will say is they're paying for the inefficiencies of some of the companies, uh, especially the ones they interface with, the discos. So, um, Yes, we, we, we still have uh, body party play there. Let's hear your views on that. <laughs> on the issue of the meter, I'm sure. Yes. Well, in, in, inevitably, meter issue must be solved. Because like the Honorable Commissioner for Legal and Licensing said, you cannot be taking so much money from your customer and expect that he will sit by and not ask for a meter. Uh, historically, that had been an issue, and I, I know of a fact that NEC, in its wisdom, has also tried to address the problem. I think we started from CAPME, if we do some, if we do some uh, historical, uh, if we go back to history, we, we started with CAPME shortly before privatization, and thereafter, I think that, that program went back to the discos, and then later on, uh, meter asset provider, and then it became more liberalized uh, to the extent that uh, there were so many, so many platforms through which a customer would get meter. So for this particular program, I think one of the things we should look forward to is that as, as this course or the market itself, let me not say this course, now this course only help to collect the money for the market and then uh, everybody gets its own percentage. As the market begins to enjoy some volumetric advantage, more money is expected to, 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 to now go into the provision of these infrastructures and customers can then be assured of the fact that 
they can get their meter, get the measurement of their consumption accurately uh, uh, taken into consideration, and then pay exactly for what you have consumed. Otherwise, uh, I think it's, it's an issue that customers are rightly, I mean, are, are showing righteous concern about and uh, to the best of my knowledge, I know that the, the, the regulator itself will not sit by and allow customers to be taken uh, on that uh, roller coaster without getting their meters. And I, I think for this cause as well, I, I think it must be emphasized at this point that they need to build that confidence level in their customers. One thing that is currently, in, uh, currently visible in the market today is that the trust level between the customers and the, the discos especially is a little bit challenged. There, there is that def trust deficit. But it is expected that as, as this new tariff begins to go into operations, uh, discos especially because they are the last line and they are the ones that customers see rather than transmission and generation uh, they, sh they must create that level of trust between themselves and the customers so that the customers can begin to see value for the service that the, the, the discos are pro or the market is providing all right thank you we have another caller on the line ralph calling in from katina hello Would you turn down the volume of your TV for me, please? Well, we'll have to go on and uh, hope that you can call back. And we, we say this every time, every Tuesday we say it. You call it in, your call gets through, turn down the volume of your TV. That's the way to avoid the whole hurl back of the echo. Well, still so many issues. Um, which have been raised about the current uh, tariffs. But again, Dr. Amadi, if you were to say, how would the customers respond to issues such as this when, to a large extent, uh, you could say that um, electricity supply has always been an issue that um, everyone would say they short change. From the days of the old NEPA, all those practices before the privatization, when people paid for what they didn't consume, <laughs> and when people who paid their bills were unfairly disconnected on block, people had transformers removed from one location to the other. It's always been uh, a tale of woe. And then you'd think that privatization would take care of all that. But there are also allegations that people who didn't have uh, the requisite competencies but those companies. And that was the beginning of the current troubles. I think um, my views about privatization is very controversial and was, even when I was chairman of NEC, uh, to the point that um, the minister invited everybody in BPE, then Batinaji and the ministry, and said, I was an enemy. In 2009, I wrote a book called Privatization, the Rule of Law Challenge, and the key point is very clear. By the way, just today, people realize that the, US, the UK government, where we got our model, have reversed rare trust privatization. Water, they privatized water, and they discovered Scotland did not privatize. Today, the water in the beauty in the UK you know, system is now sewage polluted and scholar is doing well. Now why is it like this? If you look at the National Electric Power Policy, the focus three stages. One was to unbundle, liberalize, commercialize, corporatize, and then privatization. It seems to be that we rushed to and I said it I said it clearly when I was in power, so this is not afterthought. And I maintain it. Maybe this is the time we should be privatizing. When we have built the capacity, we talk about Egypt having 20,000 megawatts a few, a few years ago. I, I think that we needed to have structured this market. When we came in, NEC, NEC has done well. The point is, look, you're regulating, what are you regulating? 3,000 something megawatts. In many cases, 3,000, 4,000. Good, good day, 4,000 megawatts. Okay, I mean, 
we were there, we had some flash points. Like, well, maybe a few days, we hit 4,000. One day we hit 4,000, it was a big celebration. And when did it come? We increased. And I, I remember when the minister fought me because I said, this present improvement is really aided. It is not related. So the question then is, if you had, if you had done this, this, we did the first, the first time we had an audited account of this disco and Jenko are talking about was in 2012, if I wasn't mistaken. Then I commissioned audited account. The Mitrin inquiry, the first time we did it, I did it was 2001 or 12, uh, by Medina Tour. And the report was 40% meter, meter rate. Uh, I think now maybe 45 or 43, would depend on virgin. Not much really. Because the more the meter uh, replacement, new customers are coming on. So, yes, they may have improved, but they are still. That, so that's not the condition to privatize. Again, the World Bank told us that, that we're not going to get, we won't be able to privatize this 11 disco. They told us that. When we privatize, or we say we are helling ourselves that we have, you know, beaten the, we have defeated the, the prediction. So what's the problem? I, I gave, a, not only Nigeria, I gave an example in Britain, how they're struggling with it. Did I just recently, or one of the power plants, posted about 300% increase in profit from last year to today. Profit. When you privatize, utilities do better because they're going to focus on cost management. They're going to, somebody's talking about metrics, somebody's talking about all this. They're going to put it the bottom line. It does not follow that consumers do better, necessarily. So it's not peculiar to us. But this is the point. I, I think that the customers will say, you raise the issue about power, and I think Nike is going to deal with that. Why should you discriminate against your consumers on access? This is a constitutional issue. You can say that price is increased. If you can afford it, you consume more. You get the point. But to say that some citizens will have more power than others will have less, as will be the case, and maybe far less. Not on the basis that they don't want to consume more, but on the basis that you've already allocated more consumption to a band. On the argument that they will pay more. And this group has less. So I won't be surprised if I say constitutional argument, as I'm speaking as a constitutional professor, that they could argue that it's discriminatory and therefore illegal to provide a particular customer group with more power. You, know, you see, for example, the normal pricing would be this. This is the price of this. If, you, if this water is 200 naira, OK? If you can only buy one bottle, you buy. Everybody is the same market, the same price. So a man who has more money buys more quantity. But here, we have created a, 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 an allocation of water. Say you have two bottles, they have 10, because they will sell to them at 500 a bottle. So that's really, the consumers will be saying, first, those who are being asked to pay 220,000, and again, another question for next day, which is also to look at, what tells you that the cost of that band A in Lagos should be the same as the band A in Kaduna? Oh. So, so we should get to a point where we basically have different discos set different tariffs for themselves, based on their cost revenue requirement, based on the cost of serving different people, but not in my view, allocated to one band has more access because energy access has tremendous economic and social welfare implications, access to education, health care, and all that. Well, perhaps uh, quickly, uh, the Commissioner Legal and Compliance will respond as well as the Vice Chairman and Commissioner of Market Compliance. And this is not against NEC. These are just well, these issues, are issues that, that have been yeah, raised yeah. All, all along. Yeah, and that unfortunately, yeah. they will have to address these issues quickly Absolutely. because we're running out of time. Okay, um, I, um, I thank Dr. Amadi for um, his, his well thought out points. Um, but um, as a lawyer myself, um, sure. I, I, we must note our history that um, we started off with the Electricity Corporation of Nigeria. Yeah, ECN. And ECN and NDA were merged to create NEPA. Okay. And we've had this issue all my life. And NEPA, there were various degrees, decrees passed by government. And the last decree was, there was a commercialization decree that made NEPA a commercial entity. 
So we had tried the, we had gone down the route of commercialization. And it still had it worked, right? And at the time of privatization, right, when President Obasanjo came into power in 1999, the total installed generation capacity of Nigeria as a whole, we were trading less than 1,500 megawatts on, 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 on a daily basis. So we agreed that we had to make massive investments in the this, in this sector. And at the time the privatization was done, I was in the government at the time, but the policy decision of government at that point in time was that let us not repeat the mistakes of the past. And there's a, there's a saying all the time that goes that um, government has no business in business. And they um, gave it to the private sector. Um, road shows were done, and um, the presentation was done on the basis of promises, which I said at the be be when this show started, that government made certain promises to the investors, and the investors also made certain promises. When we resumed as commissioners in 2017, we, we were, they, we, they had called a concept of force majeure, that was a force majeure. And I said, no, this is not a force majeure incident. That you have a case of mutual non-performance, right? right? Um, what government had told the um, people who bought these assets was that we would give you the enabling environment to do this business, mm -hmm. right? And on the basis of that enabling environment, you would get the capital and the funding you needed, right, to do the business. Where's the funding coming from? The funding is coming from us end users, right? And we never provided the tariffs that were required. Okay. So on that basis, right, we've been going round and we've seen that we've had to increase the investments, okay. right, that is required. I and on the issue of um, discrimination, which is a very cri critical point, right? right um, no one is being discriminated against, right? Because it is based on actual service that you receive. Okay. And the service you receive is based on actual investments that have been made. Which, which, co to, which, which cut across board? The same service <laughs> which cut across board? Okay, okay. Doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think I can quickly Yes, because we have just, you have just yeah. about a minute Dr. to do Modi, that. I think you know this thing better. Uh, uh, cost, just about a minute cost to finish of service up. and so right. on. Yeah, they have. As of today, mm -hmm. the investments are not uniform. Yes. Okay. The investment yes. that have been made in Tsurikoli, both what they bought and the continuation of investment they've done. Not uniform. So, is, I think it's safe to say that where they've made more investments, they, the cost of serving people there is right. higher than where right. they've not made investments. Okay. So, we, we, I think I'm on that basis, <laughs> you can say the tariff that will be paid right. by the people living in area where in much inf more investment have been made. made should be higher right. than we are less investment well, has been made. Well, I'm afraid we'll have to leave it well, there. We'll, and uh, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just a quick one. Yes, no just, we'll this is a straightforward answer, mm -hmm. which I just expect from the Vice Chairman. Um, with the states now able to participate in uh, putting up uh, uh, in, in, in the power uh, supply chain, uh, generation and supply, you think this would be, the country would be the better for it with this new tariff rate? Yeah, we expect an improvement. Uh, anyway, the states have always been uh, in a position to generate um, because we have some states that set right. up their generation. But what the uh, act, uh, the constitution has given them now the power to also in a, be in a position to set up their own regulatory bodies. Right. Okay. There are, there are going to be challenges, but we believe that with sincerity of purpose and commitment, it's going to, there are things that can be uh, okay. served. All right. As I say, no one program can take care of all the issues, and so we must leave this conversation at this point and say a big thank you to all our guests. Musli Hussein is Vice Chairman and Commissioner, Market Competition and Rates of the NEC, that's the Nigerian Electricity Regulation uh, Commission. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Right, and let's also say a big thank you to Dafe Akwane, is NEC Commissioner, Legal, Licensing and Compliance Division. Thanks for being here. It's a pleasure. Thanks for being here. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you to Dr. Sam Amadi, former chairman of NEC. It's good to have you join us. And also big thanks to Bodifadi Pe, CEO of Sage Consulting and Communications. Thank you so much for availing us of your thoughts. Thank That's you. True. Except that we don't have time to take on uh, Dr. Amadi's discrimination. <laughs> <issue>. <laughs> Yeah, we hope you'll come again and uh, the conversation <laughs> continues. And thank you, too, for participating in this program, those who called in. Next week, we'll be back with NTA Tuesday Live. I'm Cyril Stober. Bye for now.